today we're gonna talk about chain link fence tools. We have a sample fence right here because I mean, it's not as cold in here as it is outside. Working smarter, not harder. I can always hear the music in the background. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go for the T-handle. Use this for your top barbed wire or your tension wire. I like to put that nut on just a little bit tighter because believe it or not, when you're pulling the wire through, you can actually pop that nut off. I pulled my tail, I bent it over, and now I'm gonna start rolling it back towards the post. So as you can see, that wire's pulling through, it's wrapping around the pipe, and then my handle slides this way so it's not ever coming in contact with the ground, and I can work it back and forth. I can feel it getting tight. It is tight, and that's exactly right when you're right where you should stop. This is a seven gauge tension wire. Klein nines, I like those for cutting. Another favorite, these kind of pliers. On the Kleins, Everything's all in this jaw right here. On the very bottom, you have a bonus tool and you have a crimper. These ones, on the side, that's where you're gonna go ahead and cut. So as you come down, you're causing that pinch and the cut action right there. And then you have two places of jaws to grab onto. Some people like the handles, the rubber handles, some people like the steel handles. And some people like the round nose to these. The other thing that you can use alongside with this is you can use a wire stretcher. This is a chain walker, wire grab, whatever you may want to call it. You're going to take your chain, you can tie it off to the post, and then you can grab your wire behind your chain walker. If you're on a long run of tension wire, on a long run of barbed wire at the top of your chain link fence, you're going to be looking for this. To learn more about that and to learn more about the different styles, make sure and check that video out right here. This right here is our truss rod bender. We have come up with a tool so that you get a nice sharp bend on your truss rod because if you don't get a nice sharp bend, it's gonna be a nice long sloopy bend. It's more likely for it to unpull and pull back through that brace band. We're gonna lay it on top there. That's a great bend. That bolt's gonna hang out right in there and it's, we can pull a ton of tension on it. It's never gonna unbend. I see this one a lot too, where people just, what they'll do is they'll put the pipe on like that. I would say that uh, this is a difference between somebody coming to work, you know, ready for the day, and this is somebody coming to work just trying to survive the day. If you're just out there and you're the weekend warrior and you're trying to maintain your fence and, or maybe you're just like us and you're a full-time fence contractor, make sure to get a bandsaw. These things are awesome for framework. They're awesome for cutting metal. The infamous top rail dresser. This is an awesome tool just in itself. It'll hold the fabric for you. It'll lift up on the fabric when you're trying to tie your posts off. It's getting bananas around here. These are what they call banana clips. If we were on a long stretch of chain link, if the wind comes up, it's gonna blow that chain link down and you gotta stand it back up again. And it goes, it's gonna blow back down. And it's gonna stand back up again. These things right here are amazing. It's gonna go through your chain link. You're gonna turn it like that. And then that's gonna hold the chain link right at the half a diamond where you want it to be. Use number two is it's gonna keep that chain link from falling. For about a 200 foot stretch, five, six of these. If you're running multiple crews, I, I would put about five in a truck is what I'm thinking. That slot has a reason. It goes in that inch and three eighths pipe. This allows you to reach to taller heights without having to carry a ladder around with you as you're standing your wire, your wire up. You can just carry a piece of pipe and a few banana clips. All right, it's time to stretch. It's time to stretch it. Now in a short section of chain link, it's either gonna be really tight or it's gonna be a little bit loose. This one is gonna be really tight because I didn't wanna make it really loose and have a whole bunch of comments about how that looks really loose. So we're gonna go for really tight. This is a two and three eighths bear hold. It's gonna grab onto that post and on that notch, I'm gonna slide that tension bar into there. As I push in, everything comes back together and now it's locked into place. I like using these in a set of two versus a set of one, but you can use it in a set of one, obviously, because that's what we just did. Here's the standard 
pull jack. Every time I pull on the handle, it's sucking that rod in, bringing some tension to the chain link. Pay attention to this because the rod is going this way. If you have a house right here and you're stretching at a house, you're gonna have a really hard time. Whereas maybe you need something like this. This is the exact same thing, but a reverse. So if I was up against a house, my rod is now going that way. And it's no longer an obstacle for me. The combination pull jack. It has the bar across here, and then it's got these hooks. And you do the exact same thing. You're just gonna pull into the chain link. And then now you can go behind that. That's gonna allow you to pull on a wider area versus more of a single point area, like a standard pull jack or bear hold. With this one, you also get the standard as well. You get the one jack, and then you have the combination rod and the standard rod. Again, don't forget, it's very tight. If you're doing just a couple stretches and you don't need any of these tools, you could do a come along from here to here. You could do a ratchet strap. You could do maybe a board and some screws and an eye bolt. Kind of like a one-time use kind of deal. If you are doing this all day every day and you're stretching long runs, maybe what you need is a chain link rake. You're gonna put that on there just like so. You're gonna pull on it and then you have a pulling point to go from here to your post. You can go to your post Pull your chain link tight that way. The nice thing about this versus a come along, as you wind up and it's getting full and you still need to continue to stretch, this is gonna continue walking down that chain as long as your chain is straight. If your chain is not straight, this thing's gonna continue to wanna turn or walk off your chain. Make sure that your chain is straight, make sure you look down it and everything's gonna be awesome. We have to tie the fence we have to hog ring it. So let's start with tying. We're not gonna use pliers. We are over stick tying. That stuff can stay in the past. These are easy twist ties. They come in 11 gauge, they come in nine gauge. It's pretty easy, pretty painless. Squeeze that tie, turn my tool to the slots are vertical like that. You can't see them in the camera. It slides right in. Make sure I'm on gear number one. Super, super easy. And these ties grab awesome. They're super awesome. I know what you're thinking. I know exactly what you're thinking. You don't have to say it. Let me say it for you. Dan, that is so dangerous. These ties are amazing. They're 100% amazing. They hold your chain link amazing. They grab the post, they grab the top rail. These do not come unraveled. The only thing you have to do, if you're working out of school, if you're working at a residence, Knock them back that way. I can't hurt myself with the tie that way, and I can't hurt myself with the tie that way. And yes, these ties do come in color. If you're looking for ties in color and we don't have your color, make sure and reach out to us. And the last thing to do is we just need to hog ring the tension wire, and just like everything else, it comes in your nine gauge and your 11 gauge hog ring. That'd be a commercial setting. That'd be more of a residential setting. For applying the hog ring, we're gonna use these bad man pajamas. That spring in there is reversible. Right now, it is set for pulling it closed. If you flip that spring, you can go open. It has little indents in the pliers themselves that holds the hog ring. I'm gonna hook the chain link. I'm hooked to the tension wire, and now I'm gonna compress it. And as I compress it, it's gonna close. I'm hooked to both. I'm gonna squeeze, and it's gonna close. These hog ring pliers compared to the other ones are so much easier. They have longer extended handles and they are far easier to compress a nine gauge hog ring. This is a knuckling tool. You'd use this in a gate application. If you're making your own gates, you're gonna put this on like this and you're gonna twist it with one hand, such as so, like that. And then you're gonna knuckle your chain link back after making your gate so that you don't have to sit and pinch and pinch and sit and pinch these tools. All three of them do the exact same thing. This one is nippets. This one works really good for chain link, cuts it like butter. I would not use this on a high tensile fence because the tips are a little bit more fragile than these. These are Nipix, these are Strainrite. They're both the exact same thing, just two different brands. 
These you can use on chain link. These can, you can use on high tensile wire as well. They are great for cutting ties off. They are great for cutting hog rings off. They are just great for snipping and cutting and snipping and cutting. So this is a foot dresser. So just like the top rail dresser, you have to have something to pull your fabric up. Well, this is gonna require your body weight to pull the fabric down. If your chain link has a hump and you're trying to pull that hump out, you are gonna put this on your chain link, such as that, and you are going to step on it with your foot to pull that hump out. It's designed to use your weight so that you don't have to cause extra pain in your fingers. Again, work smarter, not harder, and using your body weight and gravity is working a lot smarter. And if you're looking for some of that great YouTube merch, make sure and check out our website. We got some great stickers coming. We got some awesome shirts. Now, after seeing all these tools and how we use them to build chain link fence, if you're still sitting there wondering, man, those are awesome tools, but how do I build residential chain link fence? Make sure and check that video out right here where we walk you through step-by-step -step on how to build a residential chain link fence. Or maybe you're wanting to build a commercial grade chain link fence. Let's check that video out right here. Stan with Wyoming's Fence Company. Hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you have a good dang day.